All right, it's the DFL Before DNF podcast. Uh, I'm super excited for today because we're going to talk uh, about how the, the recording of the Zion 100 went, the Zion 100 Miler Broke Me uh, video that we have on YouTube. But before that, I've been pushing hard for trail running companies to have jingles. Uh, I think I've got the first ever trail running jingle. I'm going to play this for you real quick. It's just a few seconds. Uh, the, I, I think you're going to be pretty blown away by it. If I know how to do this. Okay, here it is. Somehow we're still not Is that three part harmony? We still suck at oh. Still suck at All running, right. yeah. That's it. Uh, challenge on. Uh, challenge Hoka, your turn. All right. So. <laughs> Uh, this is my buddy, Ben. Ben, uh, has been, if you've seen all of the high fidelity videos I've posted on YouTube, so not these, uh, podcasts that I do, they've all been done by my friend, Ben. And we've, we've been friends for knocking on the door of, of 20 years at this point. We, uh, played music together for most of those, but really in like the last like three or four years, our professional friendship <laughs> has been around video and videography and, and putting out stuff. He did some stuff for me when I, when I did the coffee roasting company, La Barba, but once Borderlands got going and I decided that, uh, and the way that social media was moving and all that was, you know, you got to have a, a strong visual video strategy. Uh, Ben was of course my first call. So before we get any further, before we go into the story, welcome Ben. How, how are you and where are you? You called me cause I have this, right? Dang. Is that, that's a, shot it. is that a shot? Everything you've seen on this. Yeah. That uh, right? Man, where am I? I'm in my studio um, okay. here in Utah. And how am I? Dude, I'm pretty good. I had an epic Father's Day yesterday. Nice. So solid, man. Yeah. You, uh, and you're wearing a shirt that looks like it's from the 80s, but this it's also it's just a picture. It's just a bunch of pictures of your wife. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> she got me this for, for Father's Day. I asked her for it like a year ago. I was like, this is a cool idea. You know, it was like an Instagram ad and i was like let's do that's I, funny. Want, I want that i think that's sick there's like my daughter on there and everything. yeah for that's those cute. just listening and not watching it's just uh <laughs> if it feels like you you went to the mall in the yes. 90s <laughs> and they're, they're like hey can we make you a airbrushed shirt uh and, and <laughs> it's uh, fire, but it's just like seven photos of his wife <laughs> and it says nicole which is her name yeah. uh okay so ben first are you a trail runner oh gosh no ultra runner no, not of any a- kind Ultra no, anything? No. Are you ultra anything? <laughs> I'm not ultra a single thing. No. Okay, so this uh, is why this this is fun. No. I, I I knew the answer. I set you up. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> you've you've done a great job of of shooting and telling stories with intro running. So I know that there's like a, a a bigger picture here of storytelling in general. There's there's a thread to storytelling that transcends industry. But at the same time, I'm curious just your impressions of, you know, compared to other stuff that you shoot, other things that we've, you know, done together over the years. Like, what are your impressions of ultra trail running? Just you you were out at yeah. Dead Horse watching the 50 miler, shooting the 50 miler, editing a 50 miler documentary. You're out at Zion shooting that. You've, you know, we've shot TJ Bottom going into, you know, him talking about ultras, uh, all those podcasts where we're just going into deep deep dives with guys like Michael Whiteside or you went with me to Austin to shoot Matt Johnson. Like you've been in the ultra world now. And I'm just curious, what are your impressions? Yeah. Well, first of all, when you first told me about ultra trail running, like in the very first, you know, very first conversations that we were having probably five or six years ago, even it's, it's probably the same reaction you get with everybody. They're like, no way are people going a hundred miles on their two feet. Like that just sounds (laughs) insane. Um, I think I did a 5k one time. Um, yeah, it was a 5k. It was on Halloween day and my wife's no, no, gosh, 5k. And I was pushing my kids, like pushing them in a stroller. (laughs) Okay. And it it almost killed me. It almost killed me. And, um, so that, that's the extent of running I have in the treadmill. But when I heard about trail running in the first place, I was just like, this, this is clearly for people who are broken in the head a little bit. And you, like, we, we've talked about that. Like, you got to be a little, you gotta a little realistic. off to yeah. love the pain like that and love the yeah. suffering. Yeah, absolutely. And 
people are smiling at the start line. I'm like, you are about to get crushed and you're, you're stoked about this, but yeah. Yep. I mean, to capture the stories, the stories are built in. Like it's there, there's an incredible story after incredible story, just built into, to, to trail running and people running super long distances, ultra distances and stuff. So Yeah. yeah, they tell themselves and it's like, man, it's just a, it's a pleasure to be able to like, tag along and, and capture some of that stuff, you know, and watching, uh, I've been watching some of Drew Darby's work and stuff like, uh, with Sally, yeah. Sally McRae and, and stuff yeah. like that. And yeah, they're all, they're all powerful. So yeah, it's, it's just fun to do, but you asked about doing different work, um, in relation to this work and it mm-hmm. is completely different. Like yeah. I have, a uh, my camera rig back here. That's like, specifically built out to be able to just like go all day Hmm. in my hands, Hmm. um, not have to go back to a car or like a battery to like recharge and stuff like that, because it's so happening in, in the moment (laughs) and it's so easy to miss something, um, you know, or, or to be able to walk, you know, I I think I I walked out to you like a mile away or something like that one time. And it's like, dude, you got to have something so nimble and, yeah, not super duper heavy to get out there and capture that kind of stuff. So it's yeah, it's totally you need it to be, different. Like we want it to be like high quality, but you're also like not only is the BMX aid station that you're referring to at Zion yeah. a very remote place in the country to be, yeah. then you're going to go a mile in from that, and so you also have to. We, I mean, from a race director perspective, we joke like Zion is a hard race to put on because if you run out of food, you're you know, for an aid station, you have to go to St. George. So like you have to, sh- it's a long ways away. Yeah. You have to come with everything you need and then some, and I got to imagine then for you, it's that same deal. Like you've, you've got to show up with everything. Cause like if we're at a critical moment in the storytelling oh, yeah. and, and we're trying to capture something in real time, you got to have, you got to have it all right. And, and then some. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. And that, I mean, I learned my lesson, uh, a few, a few times I think with you. And part of that was, especially with the drone, like when you're out there, you know, the, the, the places are unbelievable. There, all these trail trail races are are held in places. Even the, even the Salt Lake 50 K, the foothills 50 K that you put on is gorgeous. So it's like built in, Mm. um, beautiful landscape. So you want to have plenty of opportunity to capture that kind of stuff. So, you know, you're, you're going out there with way more battery and way more card space and way more, you know, way more capacity than you think you're going to need because at the 50 K not the Salt Lake Foothills 50 K, but the dead horse or 50 miler, Uh I totally maxed out all 128 gigs of my drone (laughs) within like literally like within 16 hours. I was like, this is all dang gobbled. That's just of the drone 128 gigs of just the drone of just the drone. Yeah. Yeah. And some of you guys like, you know, your, your whole computer is 128 gigs on some of these like MacBook airs and stuff like that. Like you just one day kill all the space. So yeah, <laughs> I've learned my, I've learned my lesson in that, yeah. in that regard to just like be way over prepared. Um, and you saw like at the Zion, I had all my gear laid out on the table. Like it's just yeah. way too much gear because eventually you never know. It's like, I might have to snag that and run out. Right. run out on the trail and, and find you with the GPS, but which works. I think this time. is a super, this is a good point, a uh, moment to make this point. You know, I don't have the budget for you to bring out a crew. Oh uh, yeah. You know, I, I'm, maybe I do some graphics for these documentaries, like the lower thirds names and stuff like that. <laughs> um, otherwise you, this is you top to bottom. I think that's important to note. And we laughed about this the other day, I think putting a positive spin. So the, the, I mean, not even negative spin. The, the reality is, is that at these ultras, there's a lot going on. And so it's, it makes sense to have a handful of camera, pe- camera people out there shooting. Like you, you just want to make sure that you oh, get yeah. everything, have all that footage. Now we, you know, we've talked with other, uh, you know, some of the other great m- filmmakers in this space and they have multiple um, camera people. But the thing is, is that the people, their, their subject matter, and this is what I think makes Borderlands subject unique, more unique, not, you know, entirely unique is that, you know, I'm shooting a documentary about me here at first, but ultimately we want to be doing this of, of other people and more people. I'm, I'm extremely slow and I hang out at the aid stations for a very long time. So if you're shooting Sally McRae, 
she's in and out. She's competing. She's going, right. you know, she wants top 10, finish top five. She wants to, to win. So you got to have a lot of cameras in there to get all the action, all the stuff. I, you know, I was at BMX eight for 45 minutes. Yeah. And so, so, so that's you know a lot what? of footage. Yeah. So we had a lot of footage <laughs> with one camera person. I'm not saying that it's, uh, that it's easy. I'm just saying the positive spin is that I'm slow as hell. So you got time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's something, there's something to that. Um, but Ben is editing, shooting. He's, you know, director of photography. He's the grip. I don't even know what a grip does. He's also like, uh, you know, I don't know. He's everything. And so I think that's important <laughs> to note. Uh, if you're looking to hire <laughs> hire somebody. Yeah. Yeah. There's advantages. I mean, the whole crew, like you were saying, there's, there's huge advantages to having a crew. Like, yeah. um, <clears throat> one of the big advantages is having a sound design person, like somebody there mm. who's just responsible for sound. That's a whole nother world, yeah. um, is capturing great sound. And yeah. if you have a guy there who's just ded- dedicated to, <clears throat> to thinking about that, Oh, that's then you just, you know, it's, it's just like anything else. Like you get to think about something in a yeah. more narrow scope and do a more excellent job at that one thing. <clears throat> so there are challenges to being the one man crew. Um, but I, th- I thought you were going to bring up how I, I was so confused when you were leaving one of the aid stations in Zion. It was like the 25 mile aid station. I can't remember the um, name. Yeah. Yeah. Virgin. And I'm like, why? I mean, I was like, dude, you don't have to go slow for me. Like, go ahead and go ahead and run. I'll run with you for a little bit. And you're like, oh no, this is, this is the pace. Like this, I'm I am, not, in I fact, am I'm going fast. I'm going fast for you. Yeah. <laughs> you told me you were actually running for me and it was like a slow jog yeah. at yeah, best. So, you know? At best. So you can do this. I mean, that's, that's the point. That's the moral of this yeah. conversation. You've been Roby. You could have done you, this race. Yeah. Put no. Race in quotation marks. Um, no, okay, I saw Alex. So I saw the suffering. When we look, yeah, seriously, Air Force, come on. If you yeah. um, think about the whole scope of shooting the, the Zion 100 miler, uh, for mm-hmm. also Ben gave this the title. In the world of YouTube, like if you're a creator out there and you're trying to do it, like it's all about the the content has to be great. So you have to check that box. There's no way around that. The second thing is, is that your thumbnail on YouTube and your title on YouTube have to be just as good as the entire, you know, entirety of the content on the other side otherwise people will never go to it so ben yeah. also came up to the came up with a title the zion hunter miler broke me and that was i mean that's an that's a youtube optimized title and that title might change later but you know ben also came up with that so you think about the whole scope like ben i think at this point you've wrapped your mind around ultra trail running to be able to even think like youtube titles and thumbnails yeah. and uh you know to to help make it work i think we're we're north of thirty two thousand views of this in two weeks um, which is a, a massive, massive win from my perspective as the, you know, as the one who, uh, you know, dreamed this up. Oh, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud yeah, of it. Dude. And, uh, you know, I, I have no shame telling my friends like, Hey, go watch this. Not because of me, yeah. because of how great of a story it is. I just think yeah. and it's, it's cool art. Like that, that's yeah. what it is to me. Like it's fun to, it's fun to watch cool art. And then, I was going to say the learning curve, like the learning curve to ultra trail running is steep. If you're a filmmaker, it was hard. Like, and we've had countless conversations about this and I, you know, I'm still learning like all the ins and outs and, but I, I watched some of the podcasts with, with guys talking about nutrition and eating. Yeah. So I'm recognizing like, Oh, this is a crucial part. Yeah. Um, I want to capture this. I want to tell this part of the story or like pacing or looking at your watch or like all that kind of stuff is, is now apparent where it wasn't before. Or like the shoes, like when we were doing the speed right. land stuff, right. I'm like, Oh my gosh, the shoes are so important. Like, and you only <laughs> run running them for this many miles and then they're done. That kind of thing. Right. Like that's something I would never know. I have shoes that I'm, I'm wearing these shoes right now for two and a half years. Like that, it just doesn't <laughs> exist. You know what I mean? Right. Those shoes go fast. So all the gear and equipment and things you're thinking about during the race if you don't know that as a filmmaker, you have to just like put your mind within the mind of the, of the runner, you know, so often, or you just can't follow along. Does that make sense? Okay. And we're, we're back from technical. Difficulties. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Sorry guys. Great. Right. Okay. Ben Rogan. And, and we're back. And we're back. Okay. So, uh, you were talking about the shoes, the gear, just like the, like the full range, uh, of stuff that we, that we go through to make, to make ultra happen. I think 
on from my perspective, I think of like the full range of stuff it takes to make what you're doing happens. I mean, as a in in trail running right now, there's a lot of you know people are pushing out documentaries. I think it's interesting. People love them and want to you know see them more. What what has been your observation from like when I would send you references on other like the icon of the industry, Billy Yang, you, you mentioned Drew Darby. Um, there's really, and there's like, even like smaller, smaller brands or people, individuals just throwing videos out. What, what have been your impressions of it? And I mean, that can, and you can go anywhere you want with that. What, what have you been your impressions? Yeah. 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 Well, number one, first, first of all, it's, it's some of the most fun filmmaking there is like, hmm. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the Tahoe 200, the Sally McRae that mm. Drew Darby did. Yeah. And it's, I, first of all, I just love Tahoe. So it's just gorgeous oh, yeah. landscape. You just yeah. can't look away. It's so pretty and it's, you know, it, it's gritty. There's so much like interesting footage. Like there's not a lot of, t- there's not a lot of times where you're out shooting at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., where things are really, really happening. So it's just cool. Yeah. Like, that's a time where not a lot of people are holding cameras, you know what I mean? Which is yeah, probably appropriate. But yeah. Yeah. Probably the right call. Yeah. It's just like, what is, what is happening? There's people outside running during these times and like trying to stay conscious and like, this is a mile a hundred something and they're grinding through that. So watching a bunch of other stuff in the industry, I've learned so much. I have so mm-hmm. much respect for a lot of these guys doing these films. Yeah. Um, and I will say, it it feels like it's just on the upward trajectory of catching kind of the public's eye because it's such an yeah. interesting, interesting sport and fun thing to, to make film yeah. films out of. Yeah. So there, the views on YouTube and stuff, they just don't justify the quality of work for a totally. lot of these guys, even the small guys. It's like, yeah, man, th- this is hard to do. First yeah. of all, yeah. um, I can testify or I can testify to how hard it is just to tell a good story <laughs> yeah. in general and then to do it with uh, all the elements involved, all the unknowns involved of being out there. So when I see a good one, like what stuff you've sent me and even the stuff of uh, what's the France race, UTMB. Yeah, UTMB. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Now you can even, I mean, you're so in the, in this that you know the I names know. of these iconic races. I know. I know. It's, it's weird. Uh, but watching that stuff, it's just like so much respect. There's guys running after these pro um, yeah. trail runners with gimbals for oh, a right. mile, right. miles on end. It's like, yes. oh my gosh. And I think Drew does some of that too. Yeah. But it's just like, that is, that is insane. That's it like is. no other no other type of filmmaking I can think yeah. of besides maybe like Red Bull stuff and things like totally. that. Yeah. But they have huge crews as well. You know, huge budgets, like, huge crews. Right now I'm watching... Uh, Unchained season two, which is the story of Tour de France, um, so good. But when I look, when you look at all that footage of a of a crazy iconic endurance sport, they're in cars. They're shooting it in cars. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this one, you have to be on foot. I mean, because even yeah, the, no you're limited on the drone because, like, if you're in an alpine setting, there's no way you can get the drone. Some of that wide open desert running, you know, gave you some some headroom to to yeah. shoot the drone. But by and large, man, yeah, you there's people on foot chasing these people so they're running the seven minute miles with the gimbal like just oh my gosh oh my gosh it's nuts so like you've sent me a few that were done earlier on not even earlier on like seven eight years ago which doesn't seem like a long time ago but in the in the world of trail running it's a long time ago it's like that was the beginning (laughs) totally Um, it's evolved so much yeah yeah so those films you can tell like those are rudimentary type of type of films where they're like still figuring it all out and giving it a shot, just kind of winging yeah. it. And yeah. now it's just come so far there. And people are really slaying it, doing yeah. a good job. Yeah. I mean, I think about that. I mean, there's surely there were someone sent me a, a message yesterday of a book called ultra marathon. And I was like, Oh, this is cool. They're like, Hey, you should read this book. You're, con- you're contemplating doing a road ultra, which would, if we do that and we do a documentary on it, like, you know, you'll, ha- you'll be on the road. It'll be a little bit easier to yeah. access points you're not you're not you know hiking up through whatever but the point is that the book was from 1980 and i was like man that, i mean to write a book about ultra marathons in 1980 there weren't many to choose from there was i mean you probably count on yeah. two hands how many there were to choose from it's like a disc golf book yeah totally to. <laughs> <laughs> people are doing it but i mean yeah. does anyone care and <laughs> 
now that I think about like ultra running documentaries, so there were some like I think there was like a um, early 2000s, maybe even late 90s on a race called Badwater that goes through Death Valley and I think July. It's 135 miles. There were some, but I mean, then it wasn't until Unbreakable that I think people got really stoked on it. And that was 2010, oh, yeah. 2011. And then it just, you know, as it's evolving right now, it's, it's yeah, you're right. So a, a documentary from seven years ago, I mean, the quality has increased quite a bit, bits, quite a bit since then. But the thing that doesn't, and this is where I'm going with this big picture, is that storytelling mm-hmm. kind of transcends the technology even. So a great story. Oh, totally. So you can, ha- so this is, this is where I say, I want to compliment you. I, I think about this all the time with artists. It blows my mind when like a great artist. So like you think about all this, all the technical stuff that you're doing as a videographer, like all the technicality, like you're the same way that I'm getting ready in the morning for these races you're getting all your gear in order. You're going through all this. You're, you're technically minded. You have to be technically on point. Yeah. The, everything has to be work tech. You're talking about sound design. You're doing the sound design. You talk about visual. Well, you're on for visual. You're your own director of photography You're all these things. And then, then what you have to do with all that, think, think about like Picasso, early Picasso, he was painting realism. He was technically very, very good. And then he wanted to flip a switch and start to communicate something with that technical perfection. That to me is the most mind blowing thing of creativity. And Mm. what I think that you're doing that's so impressive is that you're, you're tech, you're the technical guy. And then you go in and make the art with the technicality. It's the same thing with music. You can be a fantastic guitar player and then just be an awful communicator with your technical guitar skills. Yeah. Am I making sense here? Because this is what no, totally. this is to me that always blows my mind within creativity. Like you've got to be technically good, and then you have to know how to communicate through that through that brilliance. That's what's crazy. I think that's what you do a good job of. Oh, thanks, man. No, the yeah. the tools have to just they have to complement and yeah, they they have to just give you the. It's like good paintbrushes or good knives for a chef. Like you have to have the right stuff ready to to tell that story, and yeah. that's been. Also a huge learning curve. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm almost 10 years into working with film stuff now. So there's all that stuff has to disappear and then you can just focus on the beauty of the creating, like you were talking about, like you have to just let that stuff all fade into the background, but I don't want to make it sound like I'm nailing it every time. Like there's so many mistakes that happen out there and it's all about adapting. And I think adapting is part of the conversation, maybe more than any of it. Yes. Maybe more than any of it, just like being on the trail, like, like what you have to do, adapting constantly. Like this is, you know, I forgot this yeah. thing. I wish that never happened. It happens yeah. all the time. I'm like, yeah. oh gosh, I forgot this little tiny cable that I need for this moment. Yes. Well, I'm gonna have to figure it, figure out how to. And how when to you're doing editorial in the moment, so you're doing yeah. editorial. We don't have scripts on these things. We've we've joked about this before, but I think that's also one of the things that makes them so great. Like it'd be great if we had some sort of script. It would help you in editing, but you yeah, know, we're just shooting, and then you're pulling and you're finding the story and you're bringing it to the forefront. In editorial, like if if you miss a moment that you're trying to get because something is technically incorrect, I don't I don't even know the the words, but let's say something's off on your camera and, or you're yeah. standing in the wrong spot and the sun kills the shot or whatever. Like, so you've got to have all that technicality perfect so that you can capture the moment. Cause if you don't, then you miss the moment. There's no getting that moment back in editorial. Yep. Yep. It's just like a wedding. <laughs> oh, good point. Like I mean, it's one shot good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, sometimes people would laugh about like, Oh, shooting weddings, but you like, I've had one of those things. I've had a wedding. You can't miss, like, don't miss this point i'm never getting this hopefully it happens so once well. yeah only gonna happen once in my life do not get this wrong and yeah. i think that's i think that's a fantastic uh fantastic example like the pressure is on like you can't miss yeah. these moments you're not going to get him back he's not going to kiss the bride for the first time again <laughs> that's, that's right. a good like that's a hey, really can you good get, one you hold your, hey can you guys just run that back just uh let me do i, yeah, my, hey, would you I mind? wasn't recording i, hey, I didn't hit, forgot to record again <laughs> Oh, that was good. Run that. I'm going to get a different angle. <laughs> there we go. I didn't. Sorry. We, we have a live studio audience. Oh, oh I, I wouldn't know. They're there, I guess. Um, I was going to say, I, th- I don't think there's been a time when I've, with my eyes, seen you run through, you know, the oh, starting that's line. that's funny. 
you know what I mean? Like I, I was like, I hope, I hope he's there. I hope he's yeah, right. right. And just holding it. <clears throat> and you can really tell in the Zion one, like for those of you who've seen it, you probably, there's a little moment where I just kind of highlight Josh and you can see him kind of run through this. Area. And you're looking at me. I am not looking at you. I have no idea yeah. if you're even going through. Um, but I think every single time I'm like searching for you, can't find it's dark. It's freaking 5 a.m. or whatever. I'm like, can't focus on my tiny screen, you know? Yeah. But that's like an example of like hope and pray that you're there somewhere where a crew yeah. would be amazing. <laughs> going back to what we were talking about right. before, just be like, Hey, your job is, is Josh yes. only Josh. Totally. Um, but yeah, but yeah, what I don't want to make it sound like we nail everything. What would your next time. hire be? Let's say all of a sudden budget increases and you've got to hire, yeah. like what's your immediate hire? Yeah, definitely a second camera. Um, that would probably be my next. Okay. My next and so you crew. you would still be editing. So you would bring all that second camera content in, and you'd be the one to go through it and yeah, do that. yeah, 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 yeah. If we could have somebody on site and to take take a little bit of shift, especially for the hundred milers, like when you when you have that long of a time and it goes yeah. through the night, if I could trust somebody with a shift or something like that, mm. uh, oh, that'd yeah, be a huge yeah, yeah. advantage. Yeah, that know? makes sense. Uh, just to have the energy for the next. Yeah. section and like in the zion uh film when we go over to jeremy and we're kind of hanging out with jeremy um after his his uh dnf there's like there's so many opportunities to just like hey why don't you stay with jeremy or stay on jeremy when i'm talking to josh so we can see what jeremy mm. has to say oh yeah. or watch his face or something like yeah. that there's all those different yeah. there's all those different tools to tell the story so yeah cam camera b yeah would be that makes sense yeah. Here's an interesting question. I mean, I, the world is a better place with more, uh, you know, ultra running content. And a lot of people out there, you know, Borderlands is uniquely positioned. We've got money to spend on this and in working with sponsors and all that sort of stuff. Not everybody does, but people want to tell the story and they want to maybe even tell it on their own. I've been so back and forth. Like I've, I've almost hit by on, on a few different pieces of gear and the reason I keep not doing it is because it's like, hey, I've got I've got a phone. And if I'm not doing it with my phone, what magically makes me think that if I get the DJI Osmo 3 creator, that now all of a sudden I'm going to be getting content. Does that make sense? So mm. it's like, you know, some people start to think, hey, if I just get the gear, it'll be better. But for for anyone out there who is already like shooting it, they've got thoughts, but they're trying to shoot it themselves. Do you have any just like tips for for higher quality content and never, never mind storytelling oh. in this moment, but just like, Hey, let's assume that they've already got the vision for their content. They know what they're going to be creating. They're out on the trail running. I mean, how, how big of a concern are things like the, the dirt and, you know, being in the yeah. sun all day and you, you, you know what I mean? Just kind of high level thoughts on like, how can we help trail runners who want to have better content, have better. Content? Yeah. 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 Well, first of all, story always wins. Like you yeah. cannot replace yeah, you can have it's, like an iPhone six with a yeah. great story, and it will crush compared it to an crush. iPhone fifteen with no story. So yes, exactly, Point exactly. Two. So like the the question, I mean, this is so funny. This question comes up all the time, and I, I don't think <laughs> going back to the chef analogy, like yeah. it's not the sharp knives that make the food taste good. Like there's yeah. there's so much more going on. Right. So. I would not go out and spend money on gear if I was, uh, you know, somebody just trying to create content for, for Instagram or YouTube and stuff like that, man, just focus on getting great, great stories. Like if you have, if you have something going on, like if you're about to do, um, something for the first time, maybe race for the first time, document the journey, like tell us, tell us how you're feeling so yeah. that we can relate to you, yeah. um, or be blown away by, something that you're, you're trying or, or, you know, whatever, whatever the story yeah. narrative might be, yeah. um, you know, show us you getting up at 5.00 AM so that you can still take your kids to school and get a, yes. get a run in, in the morning. Like that totally. stuff is cool. That's interesting. Yeah. And a phone is fine. A phone is totally fine for that. Like I showed right. you my little dinky camera, like this thing costs 350 bucks, you know, that will do the job. Hmm. It will totally do the job. Yeah. So it's so not about the gear. Yeah. Um, however, sharp knives in the hands of a skilled chef 
make a huge difference. Like, yeah. man, it, you're now, now, now you're cooking with grease to continue the metaphor. Yeah. Um, you know, now you're doing something that a lot of people can't do. So yeah. if you're a great storyteller with great gear and there's a great, there's great content to be captured, man, you can, yeah. you can do a yeah. ton with that. So I don't know if that fully answers your question, but yeah, it's important to know yeah. story is everything. Yeah. 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 I, I think, uh, one of the things that just creators in general, and yeah, we're kind of going down this rabbit hole, but I, this is, this is where I'm living right now. I was just thinking about how do you put out oh, yeah. the right content? There's a few things like I, I've just been obsessed with Gary Vaynerchuk. Anybody who's, who's putting out content or cares about this whole world. He's, I think he's the, by far the, the number one person in the world to talk, to listen to about it. Hmm. One of the things is like, if you're trying to refine your storytelling, put out a bunch of stuff like you've got to be embarrassed let yourself be just oh yeah entirely embarrassed let it suck let it be so bad and don't don't worry if six people see it like right now the the trend in creators on instagram is to complain about the new algorithm and it's like you 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 all go complain yeah. the more you go spend time complaining the more room you're making for me to get more attraction with my message so you're out there complaining. Yes. Just throw crap out there all the time. If anyone makes fun of you, they're not worth it anyway. Just put it out there and find the story. Find the story. If you saw early Borderlands stuff, it was very wordy. I'm a very wordy person. I was I was spending forever setting up a story. Mm. And I thought those stories were, were good, but I spent forever setting them up. And in the end, uh, people never got to the story because I spent so much time setting it up. And then Gary Vaynerchuk comes along and says, if your first second isn't amazing – with mm, yeah. story, not visual with story. If it isn't to catch their attention in the first second, then no one cares. So like flips it, everything on its, on its head. So yeah, to your point, you got to have all that strategy. Now, now gear is only, only helpful if you're doing that. So that's why I always go back to like, Hey, I was yeah. going to buy something, but if I'm not doing it on my phone, what makes me think now I'm magically going to do it with this new $600 yeah. thing or $700 thing. I'm, I'm not, but yes, to your point story, that's, Anybody who's doing yeah. well, Andrew Glaze, uh, Matt Johnson, they've got hooks, they've got stories. And then what comes behind that is a great videographer or, you know, someone of that sort to tell that story even better. Yeah. And I mean, just to add on to that point, it's, it's a different skill. Like it's a totally different skill um, to be yes. able to come up and craft great stories yeah. versus hold a camera and compose a, a yes. beautiful shot. That's a different skill. So I've had to adapt and change and learn and practice yeah. and mess up and fail. Like you've talked, like you've talked yeah. about, I've had to yeah. try it. And then I get back to my computer. I'm like, that sucks. That looks so yeah. bad. Like yeah. just genuinely, you know, call it what it is, be honest with myself and then get back out there and shoot it differently. And remember, Oh man, when I'm getting back to my computer, this is going to look terrible or this is going to look right. great. Here's how I'm going to fix it. Yeah. So there's all that, all those learnings that go into man, just reps, just try it, try it, try it, try it over and over again. So yeah, that's totally an encouragement. I would think yeah. um, to folks who just are trying to get content out there, just, just give it a shot and then yeah. be embarrassed Yeah, <laughs> and that's okay. Get real go back comfortable back. with being embarrassed. I, I was on a podcast the other day, had a great conversation about, something similar, something similar, but different. Like this, that embarrassment, like if you can get comfortable with embarrassment, embarrassment is what progress feels like. Like no yeah. one has gotten further without trying something that's a risk. And for every one successful something that you see that same, that same exact person, that one successful thing you see from them, they had a thousand embarrassing moments that got them there. Embarrassment oh, totally. is what, is what progress feels like in the, in your area of craft that's ultra running saying, yeah, hey, I think I can do this. I think I can do this in 24 hours. And then coming in at 36 hours, like that's embarrassing. It feels good. You know that because I know the next time I'm going to be more, either more realistic with my goal of time, or I'm going to train better and maybe actually get closer to that 24 hour, but you don't know until you just put yourself out there. Oh yeah. And you, you even called it out <clears throat> during the Zion uh, you know, recap that we did where it's like, man, I can't believe I was looking at the wrong thing on my watch. Like this whole time I thought I was looking at something else <laughs> yeah, and I was looking at this. That's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. Um, and then in the edit process, <laughs> when, when you were sitting right here, like, Oh my gosh, I'm just going to get crucified for this. Like, yeah. just Everyone's going to, everyone's going to know that I just blew yeah. it, yeah. but that's, you know what? You'll never do that again. That's right. <laughs> it only and takes that's, once. That's how you, 
that's how you have like that quiver of amazing insight is through your embarrassments and failure, not through let's imagine that every video you and I had done together comes out and gets a million views. We don't have as much to offer in insight in how to do this. No, you totally, know? man. Totally. So, let's get uh well, hey, the um the documentary is great. And then two weeks in to already be all it's it's five thousand views away from being more than our first documentary we did together, DFL before DNF yeah. with Jeremy. And that's been out, out for almost it's been out for ten months. Feels like longer. Yeah. So No, I'm good. I'm proud of I'm proud of everything I've done with yeah. you um and everything that we've done together. And we've even joked like uh what happens when we get to the like fifteenth version of something we do or like the right. 20th version like right. how much how much better are those gonna yeah. be and i i hope they're substantially better you know yeah um, and to put to put it I, in trail, trail running terms like billy yang before like by the time he blew up he had been trying i mean he'd been making a bunch of bunch of stuff, hundred i mean hundred, probably hundreds of videos maybe more yeah like by the time we see somebody who we think is an overnight success they've been grinding for 10 years yeah with no visibility yeah. no success yeah, no, I appreciate the, the you know the flowers about the the documentary, man. I, yeah, I'm again, I'm super proud of it. No problem sharing it with my friends. Like, hey, yeah, <laughs> you you need to watch it's this. Good. I don't care if you give good a lick story. about trail yeah. running. It's just cool to watch for sure. Yeah, yeah I can't wait for the future of of what uh, we can pull together. If any sponsors are listening, and you want to sponsor a documentary, call me. Yeah, Reese's <laughs> Reese's. <laughs> If Reese's were, were available, <laughs> Nestle, Reese's Reese's. <laughs> and uh, Nestle bought out Blue Bottle Coffee. They buy out, you know, cool stuff. Come on, come, come on, come on, buy me a documentary or Marlboro. <laughs> <laughs> the first ever ultra running documentary <laughs> sponsored by a cigarette company. <laughs> that would be us, you know. <laughs> there we go. Okay, all right. Thanks, Ben. Let's do this again, yeah, man. Yeah. It's too late. Welcome to the Borderlands.